good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Lady of Charity Parish as we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to any visitors or guests who have joined us today. Please know that you are always welcome to worship with us as a parish family. A reminder that there is no offertory collection during Mass. Please drop your donation in the basket at the entrance to help us continue the good work here at Our Lady of Charity. The basket will be by the door as you exit at the end of Mass. Thank you. We ask that everyone please keep their mask on throughout the duration of Mass. For Holy Communion, you will come forward row by row, keeping socially distanced. After you receive the Eucharist, step aside, remove your mask, and consume the host. This Mass is being offered for Catherine Parkinson and her son Jim by their family. Our celebrant today is Father Martin. Before we begin with the Mass, just one quick announcement. Uh, please see the bulletin about the uh, closing down of Holy Family uh, just for the next few weeks and um, possibly into, into the month of, uh, of uh, February and March. Um, very important announcement about uh, Holy Family. So um, right now, in the next couple of weeks, uh, this, this, this weekend right now is the last weekend we will have Masses at Holy Family Parish because we have two things. Uh, Switek Studios is coming in to complete the restoration, the painting, the uh, putting up the scaffolding. And the second thing is the lift elevator, the elevator that brings you from the, the first floor up the stairs to the level of the church. So for the next month or so, probably into March, the masses of Holy Family will be here at St. Ambrose. Okay, so uh, just a quick announcement. Make sure that you see the bulletin uh, about that announcement uh, for the future. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind, and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from, from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb, on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you among, you among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. In our modern world today, one of the most interesting ways in which we communicate is with the use of internet memes, or internet GIFs, GIFs, little pictures or graphics. And usually, we text them to each other, or we email them to one another, or we post them on Facebook or on some other social media site. And usually, the person uh, has a picture from maybe a movie, maybe a TV show, maybe something going on in the news, and they always write text, something that uh, indicates what the person is trying to make, a point about something very specific. Now, for myself, I always like to see Catholic memes on the internet, uh, memes uh, that are sort of funny and comical, using things uh, all around us, things from the news or things from pop culture. One of them, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, has to do with the feast day of St. Blaise, which is coming up on Wednesday, Wednesday, February 5th, is the feast day where we go to church and we get our throats blessed with the candles. Uh, we get the cross candles uh, on our throat and uh, the priest pronounces a blessing over us. Now, for those of you that are fans of Star Wars, uh, maybe, maybe you are, uh, one of the movies, Star Wars Attack of the Clones, had a very interesting scene where uh, the, act, the character, Anakin Skywalker, who later becomes Darth Vader, he has an enemy kneeling down in front of him and uh, Anakin is about to kill him. And he has two lightsabers in his hands, and he has them crossed uh, against the throat of the person he's about to kill. So if you've seen uh, Star Wars Attack of the Clones, it's an interesting sort of uh, uh, meme. But the person who made the meme wrote uh, up there on the meme, through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may God deliver you from every disease of, of the throat. And they gave the prayer for the Feast of St. Blaise. And I thought that was, that was quite comical. There's another internet meme, though, uh, that I've seen for Catholic memes, and it's an interesting one. And it's uh, from the movie The Right. And the movie The Right uh, came out a few years ago, starring Anthony Hopkins. And in the movie, Anthony Op Hopkins plays a priest, a priest who is an exorcist. And the movie The Right has to do with possession and exorcism. And uh, in the picture on the meme, you see Anthony Hopkins dressed as a priest, and he's holding up a crucifix. Uh, pointing it at something, at some unseen force. And the text of the meme is, everybody makes fun of the Catholic Church, and then at the bottom, until someone needs an exorcism. <laughs> now, in some ways, that's very, very true, because for Hollywood, for movies that like to make movies about the supernatural, it's one part of our religion, of our faith, that they never tire of, of making movies. They like making movies about possession and demons and hauntings. And to some extent, uh, there is uh, some truth in, what they, uh, in, the, in the things that they're talking about. Again and again, we hear in the Gospels, Jesus confronting the powers of darkness. Jesus is driving out unclean spirits. Jesus is driving out demons from somebody that is experiencing possession. Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard many times in my life, uh, priests or people in the church that have often said, uh, said, well, is this really true? Do we really still believe in exorcisms and those sorts of things? Well, the truth is, friends, yes, we still have exorcism. We still have these prayers of deliverance, these prayers that deliver a person from a demonic possession. We still have that. 
Uh, we still have priests that are trained in that rite, uh, only a very small few that are still trained in that. And sometimes people look back on the Bible and these stories and they, they might say, and I, and I have heard this myself growing up from, from priests and people in the church, well, you see, back, back, long, long, long ago, people didn't understand uh, issues of the brain, the organic material, the physiology of the brain. They didn't understand personality disorders. They didn't understand issues of mental health. They didn't understand a lot of things that happened to us as humans. And so that's sort of what they call possession and all those things. Well, on the one hand, yes, people in the ancient world very much experienced all the things that we experience in the modern world. They had issues of, uh, of mental health. They had issues of personality disorders. They had issues where the wiring of the brain uh, somehow did not connect, and it somehow impacted everything about them. But they still had the powers of the invisible world that were still moving in the world in unseen ways. And that is still true to this day. When we talk about, as Catholics, our belief in God, we always acknowledge the presence of those unseen spirits, those invisible spirits, that although we can't see them with our eyes or hear them with our ears, they are still present in the world, helping us and working, uh, helping us on the way of salvation. We call those spirits the angels. We call them our guardian angels that watch over us to protect us. We call them the archangels that help to defend us from uh, danger and from the powers of evil. But we also acknowledge the angels that chose to rebel against God, the angels that turned their back on God and decided to uh, dwell with the devil uh, in the place we call hell. And they are still active in the world today, no less than they were 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago. And friends, as Christians, as disciples, we have to make sure that we can never be manipulated in any way towards evil. And the thing is, is that, you know, the devil can use anything for his own purposes. He can use uh, chaos or discord, disunity. He can bend that to his own little will. And we've also heard people have said, the devil made me do it. Well, on the one hand, that could be true. But on the other hand, we don't necessarily have to say that because, of course, uh, you know, those powers that move about the invisible world, they know what buttons to push in each one of us to pull us away from God. Now, that first reading today talked about the power of being a prophet. In Deuteronomy, God is speaking to Moses about the prophets who will come and speak to people. Dear friends, you and I are prophets by virtue of our baptism. We have all been given the power and the ability to speak in the name of God. Because when we are baptized, we become, we are baptized into Christ as priest, prophet, and king. And so the role of a prophet is to speak out uh, on behalf of God, to two groups. First of all, your own group, maybe your own community and your own family, or an outside group, an outside community that you have no contact with. In order to be a force for unity in the world, in order for us as disciples to be a force for faith and hope and love, we have to make sure that we are staying focused on Christ, focused on, uh, on him, focused on the, the church, the Blessed Mother, the Eucharist, because those are the things that keep us on the path towards unity. They keep us on the path towards peace, towards love, towards faith and hope and charity. As I said, uh, you know, we never want to deny the powers that move about the world. As I said, uh, people say, well, Father, do we really believe in demons of possession? Yes, yes, we do. We do believe that those things exist. And we should never deny them. We should never, uh, we should never approach them with an unhealthy obsession. But we have to remember the fact that uh, in order, uh, as disciples of Christ, we can very easily be manipulated by those powers, those powers that move around us and about us. So no matter what is going on in the world, whether we focus on a, a movie that Hollywood makes, Star Wars, uh, movies about possession or demons or hauntings, no matter what's going on in the world, whether it's issues here in the United States, issues in other countries of the world, whether it's here in New York State or California, Texas, Iowa, another state of the Union, no matter what is going on, we have to make sure that our voice as prophets can be a good voice, a, for, a, a voice of prophets that is uh, one of unity, one that is one of peace, one that is of faith, hope, and love. And how do we do that? We stay focused, of course, on our Lord Jesus Christ. We stay focused on the sacraments, on the Eucharist, 
on our Blessed Mother. We stay focused on the Church, because the voice of the Church uh, certainly is the prophetic voice of God in the world, now and always. Together, dearest brothers and sisters, let us stand to profess our Catholic and Orthodox faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With great confidence in the love and mercy of our God, we present to him our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, and for all the clergy and lay leaders of our church, that God grant them good health, wisdom, and humility of service as they work to unite and lead the people of God here on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders, that the Holy Spirit guide them to govern with equity and justice for all God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for comfort and healing for all who suffer sickness of body, mind, or spirit, and for their caregivers, especially for those affected by the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the health and safety of our frontline workers, essential workers, first responders, servicemen and women, and for law enforcement, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Adeline Alice Haynes, who will be baptized in our parish this weekend, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially our family and friends, for all the souls in purgatory who have no one to pray for them, for David Rose, who passed away recently, and for Catherine and her son Jim Parkinson, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May these prayers find favor in your sight, Lord God, Heavenly Father, for they are offered in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, 
we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
parish announcements for the, for the closing prayer. This coming Friday, Friday, February 5th, is the first Friday of the month. So after the daily mass, the mass at 8 o'clock, we will have uh, adoration for an hour and a half. We'll have, uh, uh, for an hour rather. Uh, we'll have adoration after the mass for, uh, until 9.30 in the morning. So first Friday adoration will be here, uh, right after the 8 o'clock mass, until 9.30 a.m. Also on Friday, the first Friday of the month, Friday, February 5th, is a very special healing mass that will take place in the evening. Uh, this mass is special for a couple of reasons. It's the feast day of St. Agatha, and St. Agatha was one of the parishes that uh, merged to form uh, Our Lady uh, of Charity Parish, so it's the parish feast day of St. Agatha's. But also St. Agatha is a special patron saint for healing, uh, especially those who suffer from breast cancer or other forms of cancer as well. So. The Mass, there will be a healing Mass along with the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And that will take place Friday night, Friday, February 5th, at 5.30 in the evening, right here at St. Ambrose. A quick uh, note about um, finding things in church. Uh, the last few weeks, we've had the daily Mass. A number of people have said that they, they have found hosts, uh, communion in the pews, or found them on the floor, or found pieces of them. And uh, that's, that's very, very problematic. That's very uh, horrible. It's a sacrilege, actually. So, and sometimes this happens because if we have a funeral or a wedding during the week, and sometimes we, have, we do have small weddings where there might be visitors, people that are not Catholic, or Catholics that have not been in church in a really, 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 really long time, um, and uh, they don't sort of understand. Um, if that ever happens, please bring it immediately to the priest, to me, or bring it to the sacristy so that it could be dissolved uh, in water or consumed. It has to be consumed uh, either eaten or dissolved in water and poured down a special, a special uh, sink, uh, but not the one here. Um, so please, if you ever find one in the, in the pew, on the floor, uh, or in the books, sometimes they get left behind, or sometimes it looks like a fragment of the host as well. Um, the truth of the matter is, and I, and I say this, this might not just be visitors, um, Every year there's a research center in Washington, D.C., and they always put out uh, information about what Catholics believe. And there are a lot of Catholics, uh, a lot, that don't understand what the Eucharist is. And uh, they don't understand what, this, what the whole, what Holy Communion is. And uh, you know they, they think it's just sort of a symbol of, of Jesus, and that's it. So um, please, if you ever find that host uh, on the floor in the church, please bring it immediately to the priest or, or into the sacristy. Uh, Finally, as I said, the announcement about Holy Family that will be closing down. Uh, again, we're doing this for two reasons. Uh, first, Swiatek Studios has to do the rest, complete the restoration work, uh, restoring the, the artwork on the walls. So there's going to be scaffolding up, a uh, strong chemical sense uh, in the church, but also the lift elevator, the elevator that gets you from the first floor up to the level of the church. So for the month of February, until further notice, uh, the Holy Family masses will be here on the weekend. So. We'll have the 8.30 a.m. Mass, the 10 o'clock Mass, and then 11.30 Mass will be here as well. One final uh, announcement. Uh, I mentioned in the homily that this Wednesday is the feast day of St. Blaise, the Bishop and Martyr. And that's when we get our throat blessed with the candle, the cross candles. Uh, however, if you're not able to, we're going to actually have the blessing right now at the end of Mass for everybody. Uh, that will take the place of the final blessing um, for a couple of reasons. Sometimes people are not able to come to Mass on the day of. Uh, on Wednesday. So, uh, as part of the final blessing, uh, I will invite you to bow down and uh, I'll pronounce the blessing throats for everybody. Uh, we just won't do the candles uh, individually um, because, um, or the lightsabers, if you listen to the homily. Uh, we won't do the candles because uh, there's just a concern about the, the social. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Bow down for the blessing. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, May God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Joseph, pray for us. Our Lady of Charity, 